So why people can? A few things are, one, economics. Nutrition, we think that you know by preserving our food that we've grown will be better for us. Food safety, if you've canned it, you know where it's been, who's touched it, how long you've actually cooked it or put it in the pressure canner. Quality, and we always like to think you know our food's a lot better than the things that you can buy in the store. And the environment it was grown in. And also tradition, I can remember when I was little, my grandma always canning and helping her, going to the garden, picking, I mean, she had probably an acre garden and every time we'd go over for the weekend, that's what we do, go out there and help her pick and then come back in and uh, help her can also. And I've, I've probably been canning maybe on my own for seven years, so I'm still a newbie at it, but I read and I use my blue book. That's my, my Bible, I guess I could say, for canning. The reason for home canning, for freezing. There was a survey done at last year's OHCE state meeting, which is Oklahoma Home and Community, Community Education um, Groups, which I'm an advisor of the group in Carter County, and they did a survey with, I think it was roughly about 125 people, and 117 turned them in. One, the quality, cost savings was 56%, nutrition 35%, and for some other reason, 31%, and food safety, 20%. Some of the resources that we use are the um, So Easy to Preserve, which is out of the Cooperative Extension of Georgia. It's a very good information. If someone calls me with a canning question, that's usually one of the resources that I go to if I can't find it in the ball book, or the blue book. Family members or friends, and sometimes that can be good, and sometimes it can be bad because I mean, there's a lot of older recipes out there that haven't been researched to see how uh, things have changed over time. And so they'll call and say, well, this is what the ingredients are in it. Can you find one similar to that that's been tested? Extension, there's a, a county office in all of Oklahoma. We have 77 counties. There's an extension office in every county. I know Texas has extension office. There's FCS educators down, or agents down there and I've looked on Texas websites. They have some good information too, but it was really hard to find. And um, another source is the USDA, um, the Complete Guide to Home Canning, that book's there also. And it's, there, all those books are available. You can buy them online and things. Um, it's a, also another good resource. The, the Blue Book, which is very good. It's detailed. It's got your canning, your freezing, your dehydration broke down in there and that it's step by step how to do everything. And then the USDA um, website for Natural Center, the National Center for uh, Home Food Preservation. It's a very good website. It's very detailed. Uh, it tells you the canning, the freezing, the drying, how to cure and smoke, ferment, pickle, make jelly and jams, and even how to store your things. And they've even got videos on their website too that you can go and look at. They've got recipes on there. Um, it's really a lot of information. When I was looking for information, I was just, I had looked at it, but not, I guess that intent really dug in and looked at it. There's, it's a very good website to use. So what is canning? Canning is really a one step beyond cooking. It's a method that applies heat to food that is closed in the glass home canning jars. It's not cooked completely and it helps us, it helps um, once it uh, takes place and removes the air from the, <clears throat> the jar to create a seal. There's two home canning methods, and that is the water bath canning and then your pressure canning. There's two types of pressure canners. The dial gauge, which that's what this one has on it. Or no, I'm sorry, this is the weighted one. It has a weight that goes with it. And then there's the dial gauge, which I don't have one of those. <clears throat> The water bath canner has the components with this. Of course, there's the, the lid. When your jars are in there, you need to make sure you have at least one to two inches of water covering those, the lids of those jars. And then the rack usually comes with your canner when you purchase it. And then the base of the, uh, the pan. <laughs> then with the pressure canning, you have your safety valve, and then you have, of course, your lid, then the dial gauge, and then this is where your weight would go. 
and then your safety valve is this little plug right here. And there's also a rack in there too because you don't want those jars sitting directly on the bottom of that because of the heat because you want that water to circulate completely around that jar. Then some home canning utensils. You have your tongs. Those are used to uh, lift your jars out. I've had people say they think, well, it's this way because it's the rollers. It's actually, you want to use the, this, this end, the round part. So it'll grab that jar around the lip. And then you have your, your magnet, and that's to help you get the, the top of the lids out of the, your pan that you have, because you're supposed to process your lids and to clean those. And then your funnel, which is wide mouth so that it will fit in your jar and you're not making too much of a mess. And then this is your, uh, your spatula, and it has on here for the head space, like little stair on it and it goes from the one inch to all the way down to a quarter of an inch. But you can also use your jar for that technique too. And then just some other tools that you need are a cutting board, a saucepan, uh, measuring spoons, a liquid measuring cup, and then of course knives and a ladle. And then of course the colander so you can rinse your items and then a few basic other things, a spatula, spoons, and then some dish towels and rags. And then this, they call it an aluminum press. And then the different sizes of the jars and um, preparing those, um, you need to wash your jars, um, your lids, your bands, and hot water, soapy water, make sure you rinse them well so there's no soap in them. Um, keep the jars warm until they're ready to use in order for, to minimize the risk of them breaking uh, when filling with, if you're putting hot liquid into those jars. Your rings, you, know, you can wash, uh, wash those and put those in some warm water too, so that way the gaskets will um, seal. Then our different sizes of jars, you have the half pint, the wide mouth, the half pint, um, that's more narrow, and then your pint jar, your quart jar, and then your wide mouth quart jar. Processing time depends on some factors. The raw pack, that is if you know, you're gonna add the hot water into it, to cover the raw food and you leave the head space for it. Or the hot pack is that your raw foods have been boiled three to five minutes in the saucepan or blanched and then you pour those into the jar with that liquid. And then uh, some canner, canning uh, temperatures, the sea level with the water bath, it's 212. The pressure canner, it depends on you know the five, the 10, the 15 uh, pounds. Altitude, that's also a factor. The higher the altitude, it needs a longer boiling time. This is a processing time for the dial gauge pressure canner. They're all different for either the hot and the raw, for the pints and the quarts, and then of course our altitude. For storage, it's, you need to label your jars, store them in a cool, dry, dark place. And when you store them, you want to make sure that you take your, the rings off of them. And your head space. This goes back to the jar where you can tell the lip down here, that's an inch. And when it starts going around, that's a half an inch. And then right there, the very top of it is a fourth of an inch. That way, if you don't have that little tool to go and measure it, you can do it that way. And you always want to take a plastic knife or that and run it down to try to get the bubbles out of it too, because those bubbles will cause, you know, the bad to your food to spoil and get botulism or, you know, some bad things that you don't want. Testing the seals, you can do that by just taking a can and pressing on it with your finger or your thumb and then you listen for the high pitch ring when the lid is tapped with a spoon and the primary cause of spoilages they're usually under pressured or there's a fourth of the improper sealing and then this is some pictures of you know what some spoilage looks like you can tell the color doesn't look too good the texture the beans you can see that it's oozed out and it's run down the side. And then always follow your directions. The blue book is very descriptive. I mean, it tells you step by step what to do till you're completely finished.